Welcome back, everybody. Now, in the previous video, I introduced you to conservative systems. These are systems that preserve some quantity, a conserved quantity. Now, again, in physics, this often comes in the form of conservation of energy or conservation of mass or conservation of momentum, you know, all kinds of very sort of classical physical subjects. And what I would like to do is I'd like to do a specific application to interrogate uh, a conservative system and show you an example to, you know, one of the most studied, one of the oldest problems in mechanics, and that is the pendulum. Now, the pendulum is something that has fascinated me for a very long time. Now, we're only going to look at a pendulum with one single swinging arm. So think about a grandfather clock, for example. And, you know, when you start putting more arms on that pendulum, just as a, a brief aside, that's when things start getting very, very complicated. And, and myself, you know, I've been very interested in pendula with more arms. These are typical examples of chaotic systems. So I'll put a link in the comments to some of the stuff that I've done myself on these, these you know, double pendula. And in particular, I'm gonna put a link to a video that a collaborator of mine, uh, Dr. Cardi uh, Common, actually did about a double pendulum that I was involved with a project where we actually built it. It's on this, it's on a cart. It's a fascinating engineering system. And I'll let Cardi show you all about it uh, in the video, in the link, uh, or in the, in the description for this video. But we got to start somewhere, right? We have to start at the beginning. And let's start with a very, very simple setup, okay? So again, think of your, your maybe a grandfather clock. I've got a long arm that comes off attached to a mass, which I will uh, say has mass M. In this case, the length of the arm, let's say is L. And the measurement or the variable that I'm interested in here is the angle made by my pendulum arm, okay? So again, it's just tick-tocking back and forth. We're gonna actually show that you get that sort of tick-tocking, that very simple grandfather clock motion. Now, you know, using some, some physics laws uh, that I'm not gonna go fully into, but I'll, again, I'll provide a link to sort of derivation of this equation. Uh, we can see, or we can find, that the equation that governs the motion of this pendulum is given by d squared theta dt. So the second derivative, again, that's Newton coming in, plus uh, g over l. So force due to gravity divided by the length of the arm, sine of theta is equal to zero. So the sine comes from using trigonometric uh, identities, so Katoa, to figure out uh, the, the forces, the motion of this pendulum. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to get rid of constants, okay? So I'm going to non-dimensionalize the system. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to set omega equal to uh, the square root of g over l. So again, these are things that can be measured. g is the constant of gravitational acceleration, 9.81, something like that. l is the length of your pendulum arm. So essentially what you can see is the longer the pendulum arm, the smaller this value of omega is going to be. And what you can actually do is you can use that value of omega to define the natural time scale of the pendulum, okay? So the natural time scale of the pendulum is not in seconds or minutes or hours. It's in sort of omegas where omega, the unit of measurement, is this quantity right here, right? So it's directly proportional or it's inversely square root proportional to the length of that uh, pendulum arm. And if you do this, well then, what you end up getting is theta double dot plus sine theta is equal to zero, okay? So essentially this term disappears. I'm using the double dot to represent a uh, uh, derivative with respect to the natural time scale tau here. But the reason I did this is because it gets rid of constants. So I don't have to say, you know, if g is this, then I get this picture. If l is this, I get this picture. This shows that everything can be captured, you know, just qualitatively by this, uh, by this 
the diagram associated to this dynamical system. And you could equivalently find a first order system as well. So the first order system, this is our trick. We don't really like second order systems in this class. We like to write things as, as, uh, as vectorized components. And we would say theta dot is equal to V and V dot is equal to minus sine of theta. Now, if you go all the way back to uh, the first lecture, I actually gave you this example, the pendulum, but when we started talking about phase spaces. And I'd like to come back to that for a second. Let's look at what the phase space of this model is, because it's not our usual R2. Our phase space, our angles, that are those are values on the circle. So I use S1, right? This is the topological set of the circle. And velocities, which are real numbers, okay? So what this means, S1 cross R, it's all the ordered pairs where the first component is on the circle and the second component is a real number. Now... This is a conservative system. We can use those, those methods uh, that we introduced in the previous uh, video to analyze it. But let's start by identifying what the fixed points look like and what they actually are. So here, fixed points. There are two of them. There's one at zero, zero, and there's one at pi, zero. Now you're probably thinking, well, Jason, actually there's infinitely many of them, right? There is one at two pi comma zero and, and three pi and five pi and minus pi comma zero. But be careful, right? This is a one dimensional flow on the circle. And on the circle, there's only two fixed points, one at zero and one at pi. I'm identifying the point two pi with the point zero. That's, you've got all the way around the circle. So it's not a new fixed point. There's only two worth analyzing. Let's ask ourselves another question. Physically, what do these represent? This fixed point zero, zero represents the pendulum hanging perfectly downward. So the angle is zero, it's hanging perfectly down, and the velocity is zero. No movement on the pendulum at all. What is pi zero? Again, no velocity. Pi zero is when your pendulum is standing straight up. It's in that perfect balance point, okay? So it's not gonna fall off to one side, it's perfectly stood straight up. Now, again, you probably don't need a whole lot of foresight to understand what's gonna happen here. You probably get tick tocking around the, the zero zero state. And this guy, you probably fall off, right? It's probably a saddle. We know that this is a conservative system. We know it can only have um, centers and saddles. Now the question is, how do we draw out the phase plane? Well, I'm gonna let you analyze this. This is a center. So you can linearize around using the Jacobian. This one is a saddle. So very similar to the double well we saw in the previous one, or the previous example. But now we have a conservation of energy. So conservation of energy. So again, Look back at what I did in the previous example or in the previous uh, uh, video. You can define the energy function by the kinetic energy, one half times the velocity squared. All right, you've probably seen that formula before, one half mass times velocity uh, squared. And then the potential function is going to come from this sign. This is actually going to be minus cos of theta. Okay, so it's, it's an antiderivative, and then you have to do uh, a negative value, okay? And you can very easily check. So let's do a check. Let's take the derivative of the energy with respect to time in this case. Well, this is going to be one half, ah, uh, sorry, no one half anymore. The two comes down, you get V, and then times V dot chain rule, and then taking the derivative of minus cos gives you sine, so plus sine of theta, and then chain rule times theta dot, right? So I'm taking the derivative of the energy with respect to time. Now let's fill in what I have. This becomes minus V times sine of theta, B 
because V dot is minus sine of theta and then plus sine of theta and then theta dot is V. So this is equal to zero. All good, right? So this is a check mark telling me that I did it right. But it tells me that my energy is conserved, right? It's not changing along trajectories. So how do I sketch this thing out? Well, I showed you in the previous video, you can always use Wolfram or, or Maple or any of these computational softwares to do this. So phase plane, Now, trajectories lie on, lie on, that's going to be the energy, the, the, uh, the contour lines of the energy, so that's one half V squared minus cos of theta is equal to a constant. Again, you can just pick different values of the constant and put them in and you can sketch out what the different curves look like to get yourself a nice phase plane diagram. So let's do this. This is theta. So let's go, here's pi. Here's minus pi. Now, remember the phase plane for this thing is technically a cylinder, right? It's a one dimensional circle and then a one dimensional line. So these points are actually the same. I mean, I just don't have a, the way of, I can't draw a cylinder to draw this on, but these are the same. This wraps around, right? Velocity goes forever in every single direction. And okay, so what do we have? Well, you can, we already showed in the previous uh, video that the centers, these things are minima of the energy and therefore they're surrounded by a bunch of closed orbits. So in our case, we, have, we can get the closed orbits. We just need to figure out what direction they're flowing in. Okay. Now, what does that represent? Again, Zero, zero as a fixed point is the pendulum hanging straight down. What do these represent? That's the grandfather clock. That's just the slow tick tocking back and forth. These are periodic solutions. They're, re they're repeating back and forth. Now, be careful with the velocity here. It might be kind of confusing. This is in two dimensions, but it says that the, the angle just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, you can keep doing this and you can keep finding for different values of C as you keep sort of increasing it up, you get all of these nice closed orbits that surround you until you get to the energy level set that is the same as your saddle points here. So the saddle points, you know that there's a direction going out and a direction coming in, direction coming in, direction going out, which you can actually show is you get these little homoclinic orbits. So these are our homoclinic orbits. And it also goes this way, but remember these things, this wraps around to this, okay? So there's a one homoclinic orbit that goes around the top like this and one homoclinic orbit that goes around the, the bottom like this. Now let's think about what does that actually represent physically? Okay, so backward and forward in time, I go to the standing up position. Remember, this is the same as this and that represents standing straight up. So what happens? Theta makes a full rotation. It goes from minus pi all the way around to pi. It goes all the way around the circle. So what happens? My pendulum, standing straight up, it falls down, it falls around, and it goes right back to standing. That's what those homoclinic orbits represent. Everything with energy smaller than that is tick-tocking, okay? So maybe this one right here would represent the, the pendulum starting way up like this. It would come down and around, go up, come down and around, go up, and it would tick-tock back and forth. 
And eventually you get to this, this homoclinic orbit where you go down and then stand right back up at attention. It does not repeat, right? It only goes from minus pi up to pi and eventually just stands straight up again. And what happens when you're outside of this? You get these big unbounded looking curves. So sometimes these are called librations. Ah, sorry, this should be going in. Now, what do these things represent on the outside here? Well, this is, so again, if you wrap this around as a cylinder, now your theta variable is just going around and around and around and around, and it's doing it super fast. What that means is you started with a ton of energy, right? So you started with lots of energy in this thing, it means lots of velocity, and what you did is you took your pendulum arm and you threw it like you're on Price is Right. And this is what's happening. You're going around and around and around and around. Theta goes around and around and around and around, and it's doing it super fast. And you can see the only way that's ever gonna happen is if you throw it. It needs lots of energy, and it needs lots of initial velocity. This would be going in one direction, this is going in the other direction. So I could also take this and throw it this way, right? It doesn't matter which way it goes, the pendulum, is. it doesn't matter as long as you initialize it somehow, but that's what these librations represent up here. Now, as one other piece of this, I would just like to briefly comment on the effect of damping. Because because obviously this doesn't happen in real life, right? You we talked about this with the particle moving in the in the double well potential in the in the pendulum as well. I mean, your your grandfather clock is going to remain pretty accurate for a long time, but not on for hundreds of years or something, right? Eventually friction is going to come in, potentially a little bit of air resistance. You know, there's all kinds of other forces that act on this thing. And eventually things are going to stop. It's going to slow down, right? Even these big crazy motions where you throw this, the wheel, right? I mean, again, think about the price is right. You throw the wheel, eventually it's going to stop. That's due to friction, air resource, resistance, all these other sort of forces that are acting on this thing that have been neglected in your model. So the way that you can actually quantify some of these forces that slow you down is through what's called damping. And so what you would do is you would augment your differential equation to this. And let me just write it before we talk about it. I have a value here B. This would be a damping coefficient. Now this could represent the strength of friction, right? So if you have your pendulum arm, maybe it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of friction coming from the swinging back and forth, right? Or maybe there's all kinds of air resistance, right? Maybe it's in a, in, uh, you know, uh, do, you're sort of doing this on a different planet, right? Where there's a thicker atmosphere. Whatever it happens to be, this can represent all kinds of different things. Now, let's see what happens to the energy of this problem now. So, in this case, the energy, now the energy never changes, right? It's always kinetic energy plus potential energy. That, did, that part didn't change, so the energy still it remains the same. This would be uh, ddt, and you get one half theta dot, squared, right? So that's the V squared. So I'm just going to put it all in thetas for now, just to make our life easy, minus cos of theta. And this would give me theta dot times theta double dot, right? Chain rule, plus um, sine of theta times theta dot. And theta double dot is if I rearrange this and I cancel on terms, basically what I get is minus b times theta dot squared. Now, since b is positive, this tells me that my energy is no longer constant. It's decreasing. I'm losing energy. I'm dissipating energy from my system. 
that makes sense, right? Based on what I just told you. The friction is causing you to slow down, right? And what this is doing is it means that your TikToking doesn't happen anymore. Every time you try and swing this thing, you don't quite come back up to where you were. Again, think about yourself, you know, on the playground as a little kid on the swings. Maybe you start way up and you, and you let yourself go. You don't quite come back up to where you started. And then you let yourself go again and you don't quite make it back up. And eventually you kind of settle in, right? That's what's happening here. You're dissipating energy. You're losing energy. Energy is being lost in the system due to this damping. And what you can actually show here, now I'm not going to go through it fully, but I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to have fun with. You can actually sketch out the phase plane in this case. I'm just going to do it very, very small down here. Essentially what happens is what was a periodic orbit right here, or a closed orbit, it fails. And you spiral in. So that center now becomes a stable fixed point, it becomes hyperbolic. So you can use all of the examples, the rabbit and sheep examples, for example. They'll, they'll do it. You can, you can sketch out these phase diagrams using very standard methods. Same thing, my homoclinic orbit that shot me from standing straight up all the way back around to standing straight up, well, friction's not gonna let me get all the way there. Standing straight up all the way around, can't quite get it and fall back. So what does that look like? Just misses, comes down, and spirals in. All right, so standing straight up, comes down around, just misses, swings, swings, until it very sadly kind of settles into hanging down. So this shows us the dissipation of energy will cause everybody to sort of settle into steady states. Now we're gonna look at this in more detail later. This is an example of what's called a Lyapunov function, um, or this, this would be, uh, and it, it sort of tells us that you can't have closed orbits anymore because we are sort of dissipating energy. You can't just tick tock back and forth. You've eventually got to lose energy and you eventually just can't make it back to where you started anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for you to have fun with. I want you to try and sketch out the phase plane now when you have this damping in here. You can, you know, if it makes you feel better, you can choose specific values of B, but it won't matter as long as you choose a, a positive value. Okay, in the next uh, video, we're going to look at index theory, a really cool sort of topological way of looking at phase plane diagrams. So I'll see you in the next video, everybody.